It's time to take your business to the next level, the boss level. These are the premier business owner strategies and successes being utilized by the industry's top talent today. Rock your business like a boss, a VO boss. Now let's welcome your host, Anne Ganguza. Hey everyone, welcome to the VO Boss Podcast and the Boss Superpower Series. I'm your host, Anne Ganguza, and I'm here with my lovely, amazing boss co-host, La Lapidez. Thank you, Anne. Awesome to see you today. Hey, La. Yes, so awesome to see you too. So the other day, I was prepping for a new year of my VO Peeps group where I have Mm -hmm. guest directors come in once a month to do online workshops. And Mm -hmm. the very popular ones are typically ones that have agents such as yourself and casting Mm -hmm. directors. And I was going through the list, okay, what casting directors, what agents do I know? And there are some agents that I don't know, but I would like to know, and agents that I do know that I've dealt with before. And I thought there has to be a protocol because I need to introduce myself to them, right? And I know a lot of people, when they want to get an agent, they have to introduce themselves to an agent. And so I thought it would be a good time to talk about protocol when— working with an agent or reaching out to an agent or casting director and then maintaining a relationship. Mm, That's a great topic. Let's talk about that. Love that. Absolutely. So I'm going to ask you because you are an agent. So tell me, what is your preferred method of, let's say, a new talent wants to be represented by you? What do you recommend or how do you prefer that someone reaches out to you? Right. That's a great question. Now, I'm one of those people that is out in the world. So I'm not just at the office. I'm also out in the world. So I'm speaking at conferences. I'm invited to events. I'm doing online training. I'm like all over the map. And partly it's to educate and partly it's to meet new talent. Mm. And I make that very clear. I'm very transparent about that. And that's a very New York, L.A. sentiment for actors that if they want to meet casting and agents, they oftentimes will take classes. They'll work with those people in the training, in the conference, in the group so that they can see a little bit of their work or at least get to talk Mm -hmm. to them. Because I feel like a human interface is so much better for me than just getting an email, Ah, if possible. So I love it when people are in a class, in a group, in a session, and they point themselves out. Mm -hmm. And that could be as simple is maybe they ask a really smart question or maybe they volunteer to do a read if they're allowed to do a read or maybe they put their contact information in the chat if it's online. My point is I love proactive people because I know proactive talent are going to be much easier to work with than talent Mm. who is passive or shy or just unknowing or newbie and they're waiting for magic to happen. I love people who are partnering with me and creating magic magic on their own, too. So I love when they reach out in person at an event, at a class, at a happening. Number one, that's my favorite. If it doesn't happen that way, it's okay to email and submit. I welcome that. And I need that because we're still growing our roster. Mm -hmm. However, I will say one thing. Kiss it. Keep it short and sweet. Ah, yes. I get too many emails, Mm -hmm. and I know you do as well, that are three, four, five, six paragraphs long telling me everything that's going on. uh, Don't do it. Even with someone I know, I can't get through it. I just don't have the time to read through that whole thing. Just one paragraph, right? And just throw in your links. I think anytime you send an email these days, the shorter and the sweeter you can make it, the better. Just because not every person has time to read a full page of email. No, and I need to see it right up front. Like, we call it above the fold. So if Mm -hmm. I get to the website, for instance, if you have a website, that's terrific. Anything you have online, I just need to see it quickly. If I have to scroll all the way down or go to another page, it's hard because I don't know what I'm looking for. And I don't always want to hear all of the animation demos or all of the other kinds of work that you do. It's a great reference point to have, but I don't always need that. So targeting the person you are courting is really important. If I'm courting a commercial agent, the commercial agent just isn't going to be as interested oftentimes in your animation work. They'll like to know you have it because they'll consider you're working pro, but they may not represent that kind of work versus an animation production house, you have to have your animation demos with an S, not just one, but more than one. 
And that's got to be front and center. So I say target your market. Know exactly who you're reaching out to. Keep it short and sweet. Kiss it. Keep it short and sweet. And give them exactly what they're looking for up front. If they want more info, they'll ask you. Oh, I like that. So how do we know what information to send? Because here's the thing, right? Let's say if there is an opportunity to meet them in an online workout or at a conference, that's a great way to get in front of an agent. And I think that that has worked really well for a multitude of students I know that have gotten taken on a roster after they have appeared in a workout at VO Peeps and also Mm -hmm. at conferences. Mm -hmm. I've seen that work out really well Mm -hmm. for people. But what if there are some agencies that maybe are not looking to fill their roster just yet, or maybe their roster is full, but yet people want to introduce themselves and maybe make an impression. Is that a favorable thing to do? And how should they do that? Absolutely. And you have to remember, just because you're in front of someone does not mean they're interested in working with you. It doesn't mean they're even interested in receiving a submission Mm. from you. So I do find the more I meet fellow agents and casting and producers, the more articulate they are if they're on a panel or if they're doing a workshop. They'll tell you. Oftentimes, they're very straightforward people, and they'll say, hey, yeah, I'd like to see your submission. I'd like to see your work. Or, no, I don't give out my contact information. I'll check in with you in a couple months if I need anything. Mm -hmm. So typically, they're pretty articulate to say if they're comfortable you contacting them or not. And if you do contact them, What exactly are you contacting them for? They don't fool around across the board. They want to know exactly who you are and what you want. What are you contacting them for? Otherwise, you're bothering Mm -hmm, them. mm -hmm, You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, it's a typical letter that you would send out to any prospect in business. Like, say, don't give me your life story. No one cares. What they care about is, why are you coming to me? Sure. What are you looking for? And I think that it's very important to understand, just as in direct marketing, I deal with this with the VO Boss Blast, right? I have a Mm -hmm. lot of clients that are like, look, I sent out my marketing materials to all these people on the list, but nobody's contacted me. It's very much Mm -hmm. a timing issue, meaning there has to be a need. It's not like you've submitted auditions, right? When somebody's come to you with auditions, right? Here, I've got an audition for this spot. There is a need, right? It's a demonstrated need that I've got a commercial I'm producing or I've got some sort of promotion that I'm going to produce and I need a voice artist or I need a voice actor for that. When you are direct marketing and kind of saying, hi, I'm here, can I get on your roster? You don't know at what time you're reaching, right? Is there a need for you on that roster? And if not, it's got to be one of those things where it's a gentle sort of inquiry into, and as you said, keep it short and sweet because Otherwise, you are bothering them because maybe there is no need. And I always go back to my old, how do we buy? How do we purchase? How do we acquire things? Or how do we get things that we need? Right now, it's been Mm -hmm. a crazy holiday season, right? So I am signed up for all these mailing lists, right? And I get three or four emails a week from the same companies. But yet, I don't have a need for anything that they have. But when I do have a need, I'm then looking at that subject line. I'm looking into the email. And that's a very important part of determining whether I'm going to read that email and then purchase or, let's say, entertain the option of having somebody on my roster. So the timing has to be right. And so sometimes you could send emails and nothing happens. And that's very true, I think, with reaching out to agents or casting directors, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. you may not get any response. And then you might be like, oh, gosh, have I done the right thing? And I'll tell you that the one thing that you want to do, just as in yourself, right, you don't want people to be annoying. You don't Mm want to read a book because I don't have time to get through that book. It needs to be short and to the point and respectful of Mm -hmm. their time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Oh, my gosh. Totally agree agree. And I would say, you know, it's the old FOMO thing. It's like, keep top of mind. If they see you enough, you're branding yourself. So they're seeing you. They get to psychologically feel that you've been in business forever, even though you've been in business for two years. They start to say, oh, they've been around. Mm -hmm. I don't want to miss out on just seeing quickly what John Smith is doing. Like, and then they trash it. Great. That's what you want. So that then when they have the need, they think, John Smith. Yes, absolutely. I always get his stuff, right? So it's that sort of keeping your finger on the yes. pulse of what is happening in all of their worlds and not falling into 
that mindset that you and I speak about all the time, the narcissism yeah. of like, I'm ready to work. I'm here. Why aren't they hiring me? Mm. Well, they don't need you. Right. Top of mind is so interesting for an agent, right? Like, I love that we said you do yeah. need to be top of mind. So that means you reach back out, right? If you don't hear anything, you reach back out. But how yep. often, Law? This is the question. How often do we reach out? Now, for marketing and soliciting voice acting services, I think you can reach out to somebody once, twice a month, three times a month. And if you give them the option to unsubscribe, right, for direct marketing, yeah. that's awesome. I personally think we should add that option to unsubscribe if you're reaching out too many times to an agent or a casting director because that will right. tell you right away if they have a need or not. Or yes. it shows that you're considerate of their time. And I actually just kind of came up with this right now. I'm like, gosh, that would be nice, a nice option. If you just threw at the end of your email, just say, hey, I would love to connect with you. Please let me know. I'd like to follow up with you. Maybe not next week, but I'd like to follow up with you in a few months. Yes. If you would prefer that I don't, please let me know by hitting reply and that kind of thing. I love it. And I think that would show, number it. one, that you're considerate of their time. Number two, that you know how to conduct yourself professionally, mm -hmm. right, and not be a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. Because I know that when people send me unsolicited emails, I get annoyed if there's more of them that come in the next day or what happens in, I have Gmail, it shows in a thread. So I see like, oh, you've yes. sent me five emails already, uh, pretty yeah, much yeah, following yeah. up and I have not responded to you. So you would think, take me off your list, yeah. right? Right. And I think that that that's honestly, I think it's inferred nowadays yeah. that if I don't want to get your stuff, I go to the bottom of your yeah. email, I find my preferences, I find my unsubscribe. Me or my assistant can do it in like 15 seconds. It's okay. I'm used to doing yeah. that. It's like that's part of our thing that we do these days. But most of the time, I actually don't yeah. do it. Unless it's a big box store or a huge corporation yeah. that I have no interest in at all, I want to know what my talent's yeah. doing. I want to know what prospects are doing. And what we will say is we try to be really kind both as the studio and an agency. So if someone comes in and they're sending me their stuff and they're not a good fit, we'll write to them. We'll let them know. We won't just let them hang yeah. in the balance. We'll nice. say, hey, you're not a good fit for our roster right now. Could you please come back and check in in the next three to six months? Perhaps you'll have updated materials. Perhaps you'll have a couple cool jobs to share yeah. with us. And we'd like to relook at mm -hmm. that later, which we would. We would. And that's really nice of you, but not all agents will do that. No, no, they and won't. And so if they don't, I think that it's absolutely a professional thing to actually, in the email at the very end, just say, I would like to contact you in three to six months. Mm -hmm. Again, if that would be okay with you. If not, please let me know. That kind of thing. And that just yes. shows that you are respectful of them and their time. Yes. And also, don't forget, bosses, to really research the person that you're sending out yes. to. Like, you should know, like, what does this agency specialize in? Mm -hmm. What does their roster look like already? Are you filling mm -hmm. a hole in that roster? Because, again, there has to be a need. I have yeah. to have a need to buy from Old Navy that pair of shorts or that T-shirt. I'm glad you said yeah. that because so few people are Googling mm -hmm. or going. Going to websites, like you should be, before you blast anyone, go to the website, make sure they're legit, yeah. see where they're located, see if that's the market you want to cover, see the kinds of voices that they're working yeah. with now. Where do you fit in that whole realm? It only takes you five minutes or less yeah. to do that. And let's say you're going to paste, what I call pasting is doing a blast of like 50 or 100. So spend a Saturday oh, yeah. doing a little bit of research. Please. It's worth it because mm -hmm. what if they're interested in working mm -hmm. with you? Then you know nothing about them. Yeah. Exactly. Right? You want to have some working knowledge if you meet with them or if you go back and forth with them. I also want to say, Annie, too, because so many talent have a lot of reps, which is great mm -hmm. if they're freelancing. If they're not signed exclusively, they should. Our agency is freelance, non-exclusive. So we know they're going to work with six or eight or ten different people. Sure. Keep them straight. Keep them straight. Here's what we found. We found a number of auditions that come in. Every couple of auditions have the wrong slate oh. on them with the wrong oh. agency because agencies, as That's we all know, good. on the national front will get some of the same sure, clients absolutely. in and some of the same scripts in. Be very careful that you don't do We were really offended oh, by that. Oh, gosh, yes. I would be offended. Because, number one, that told us they weren't mm -hmm. playing it back and listening to it. But number two, that they would send that in. And number three, it's like have an awareness of, like, who's sending you what and who's doing what. I'm just going to say, way to get yourself kind of blacklisted. Well, you know what I mean? We didn't do well, that. No, but, but still, we were, you make an impression when you do that. You and make and an that impression. impression sometimes lasts for a long time. 
We won't forget that. We know exactly the people that did that. And they didn't do it on purpose, and we're not going to have any malice towards them. But we're watching them. If they do it again, they could Mm -hmm. be dropped because we don't want to not hear that because we're too busy. Send it out to a client, and then it goes to another agency. Okay, so that's one thing. The other thing, too, is like when you sign a contract, and I'm sure most of these places are going to have you sign a freelance agreement of some kind— read it. Oh. Some of the folks are yes. not reading Please. it. And we've had a few people that don't have Source Connect mm-hmm. and they're up for bookings and we're like, wait a second, you signed you our said you had letter of agreement. Connect. It said, right? We've dropped a couple people over that because we're like, we're not going to sure. be at your home doing yeah. this for you. You got to do it for yourself. Isn't that sad? But it's like that's the nature of the mm-hmm. protocol and etiquette scene. Oh, another question we get too, law. I don't want to offend anyone. So if I'm getting the same script from a couple different offices, how should I treat that? For us, it's very simple. For me, it's simple. <laughs> you do my script. Yeah. <laughs> well, some offices yeah. do say that. They actually threaten mm-hmm. the talent. I've heard that behind the scenes. They will threaten the talent to drop them if they don't do theirs, mm-hmm. which I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like scare tactics. I would say it's up to you. You can either go with the first one that yes. sent it to you for time sensitivity. Just go with the first or if they're coming in the same time, two or three offices, just choose the one you have the best relationship I agree. with. And you I wanna agree. it's up to mm. you. We're not gonna be offended in any way. Oh, and the other thing I wanna say too is please, and I'm only talking for us. I'm not talking about every other agency. I'm only talking about MCVO. Don't tell us you're passing on a job. Just pass. Mm. Because mm-hmm. we could get 20, 30, 40, 60 emails saying, sorry on vacation, sorry I'm passing, sorry that and be like, it's okay. We got plenty of talent who are going to be submitting for this. It's okay. I think sometimes talent feel like I'm being selected personally well, some, for this audition. I feel like I have an agent who does select personally. And so if I can't audition, they will get upset if I don't. But you would know mm-hmm. that. See, that's exactly. the thing. You, you would know, know that. That agent, agent Yes. We do that, too. So if we have a hand selection, mm-hmm. we'll say, hey, we chose you for this exactly. or our producer asked for yeah. you and we did it. You would know that. Otherwise, yeah. just assume it's coming to a number of people, not just you, right? Unless you hear from them. Well, I remember when I initially signed with you, I was like, look, if I cannot respond to an audition, you won't be offended, right? Because I do have an agent that will be like, no, why did you not respond? And you were like, no, that's entirely fine. That is up to you. And so it behooves you to understand or have a relationship enough with your agent so that you know about these things. You know mm-hmm. if it's appropriate yes. to respond. Just ask. Now, Law, how do you feel about people keeping up with you on their latest accomplishments? I think new demos are always good. Hey, you know, I just produced a new commercial demo. I want to send it to you so you can have an update. Yeah, they do it, Annie. They do it. It's fine. Our pros do it. Pros in the roster. Mm -hmm. will do it that they'll say hey we got a new demo or we just did a job for this or whatever tim and i always give really positive feedback Mm -hmm. and it's really great just to kind of know what's happening i don't need that if you're not represented by us i really don't need that what i would need is clearly you're submitting to the agency so every couple months just send a nice little letter and have your website updated and that's enough Mm -hmm. we don't need to hear every single thing that you're booking Mm -hmm. or everything Mm -hmm. that you're doing unless it's so huge that we kind of have to know about it you know what i mean just be careful how much time and brain space you try to take up Mm -hmm. of people that you're working with less is always going to be more i also wanted to talk too about something that recently happened with one of our roster talent, mm-hmm. quite by accident, I think, not intentionally. And that was this person auditioned for a gig in September, and the clients didn't make their decisions. They're now whittling it down and checking availability. So we put it out to the couple talent we're checking. That's three months, bosses, by the way. That can happen. Just F Over three yes. months. Over three months. Yes. And this person came back and said, yeah, I'm going to pass on this because it's not up to speed with the rate guidelines that I'm looking at, and I'd feel more comfortable. And I know this talent, and they're phenomenal, right? And we came back and we said, listen, we have to tell you, you already auditioned for it. Mm. You forgot about it. Here's the MP3 right here. And you have, in essence, agreed to the terms that you auditioned for. That's not to say 
we're not ready and able and willing to go fight for some more money, right. which we do, right. fight for more usage, which we do. That's like innate with us to do that. And that talent came back because they're a fabulous person and said, oh, I'm so sorry. I literally forgot. It's okay. I'll follow through. I'll execute. Mm-hmm. I'm available. I got my source connect. That's what we call a mensch in the industry. Mm-hmm. That's a good person. Yeah. That's a person that says, okay, I may not move forward on those kinds of jobs in the future, but I already accepted right. those terms when I auditioned that we make really right. clear, like, because we may not be able to get more money on that or more stuff on that. Sure. And it shows that you're working together in partnership. And I think that that is something right. that is so important for voice actors to understand that it's not a one-way relationship. It really is a give and a take, and you are working together in partnership to get this job. I mean, you're both there to satisfy the client and make some money. And I feel that if a voice actor is not going to follow through or they're going to all of a sudden become difficult and then start demanding. I mean, look, I am all about getting a fair wage and getting fair compensation for our voices. And I think we've been fighting for that all along. And if you don't have belief in your agent that they are also fighting that battle for you, right, then maybe you shouldn't be together anymore. Doing it, right. I mean— That's the job of the agent. I mean, the job is not just to accept the terms and say, oh, this is great, whatever. But to say, okay, that's what we call leveraging. So if we have a great talent that comes on, because remember, the talent is not seeing the relationship in the background. That You have to assume there's this whole, like a horse with blinders on. There's this whole thing going on that you're not privy to. That is, how well do we know the client? Can we go back and forth with them? Can we shimmy, which we Mm -hmm. always try to do? Tim is great at it, and I try on my end as well, to say, hey, we got you another 500 bucks, yeah. another 1000 mm-hmm. bucks on mm-hmm. that one, because they saw the logic behind it, or they saw it was difficult to get the talent for it. But the truth is, I know the truth is non-PC, but the truth is, if this talent decided not to do it, I would still love this talent because they're awesome person mm-hmm. and fabulous, but we can replace them in a second. Yeah. That's yeah. just the truth yeah. of it. I have a hundred mm-hmm. people in that category right now ready to sort of kill nuns to get that yeah. job. So it's not something that our agency would be willing to give up. So it's a balance mm-hmm. is what mm-hmm. I'm saying. Like we yes. want to be fair to the talent. We want to be fair to the client. We want to have good working practices. We want to come back and do more mm-hmm. work. So we're pushing. We're always like pushing, pushing, pushing. But sometimes you have to stay. And you have to make the decision if you're going to move forward or not, you know? And it's okay if you don't. There's other talent who will. Absolutely. Another great discussion. So I think always important to really just get to know your agent, get to know your manager, and really educate on the agency, educate, and really be a human being, I think. Just be a good human human being being. because that's really when it comes down to it. We are interacting with human beings, and we both want a positive experience as a voice actor and as an agent. And if you do get a manager, I would say make sure the manager knows Mm -hmm. your agencies and works well with them. You don't want to hide people under the rug. You want to have a yeah, team. Have absolutely. a team approach. It is a team. A lot of people feel like if they tell me about their other agencies, they're cheating on me in the marriage. And I don't treat it yeah. that way. I feel like you're making a viable career. That makes me happy that you book something somewhere. Yeah. It's yeah. great. Absolutely. So have that it makes team Makes you more approach. marketable for, for you, actually. So Yeah, for sure. All right, bosses. Simple mission, big impact. 100 voices, one hour. $10,000, four times a year. Bosses, visit 100voiceswhocare.org to join us. And big shout out to our sponsor, IPDTL. You too can connect and network like bosses, like Law and myself. Find out more at IPDTL.com. You guys have an amazing week and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Join us next week for another edition of VO Boss with your host, Ann Ganguza. And take your business to the next level. Sign up for our mailing list at voboss.com and receive exclusive content, industry revolutionizing tips and strategies, and new ways to rock your business like a boss. Redistribution with permission, coast-to-coast connectivity via IPDTL. And it's Fourth of July. Again. I noticed I have that. No idea move why. Move your move your mouse, maybe. It's that's so funny. I don't have oh a mouse. Oh my god, that's so <laughs> funny. The back, I don't have any mouse. It's just it's I'm making like a very screen. explosive it's, I know, point. It's almost like your screen is going to going going to sleep, or you're making going to sleep. Or you're, yeah, or you're making an explosive <laughs> or I'm making point. Explosive. I love that. <laughs> <laughs>